Tech Rocket, and we are so excited to be here. We want to start by thanking Facebook and Instagram for flying us out here to the Ministry of Magic to share our learnings. It's really <laughs> exciting. Uh, and also to Fozzie and Stephen Borkham. Who, let's be honest, is the Dumbledore of cyber safety. Um, where, wherever you are, you are the Grand Wizard, except a much, 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 much younger version. <laughs> So today, Project Rocket is Australia's youth-driven movement against bullying, hate, and prejudice. But it hasn't always been that way. Yeah, we thought that to really um, explain the Project Rocket story, we're going to rewind a little bit and go way, way back. And we're going to serve ourselves up on a platter and share an embarrassing old family photo. <laughs> so Luce and I are actually sisters. So we've known each other for a really, really long time. <laughs> and I guess like Project Rocket, the concept has been brewing for a really long time. We're very, very different people, believe it or not, but we do share some really important things in common that have really influenced the Project Rocket journey. And our mum is one of them. I remember some of my earliest memories are coming home from school and if I ever said to mum, oh, I saw something really horrible in the playground today, without a doubt her response was always the same, it was always the question, well, what are you gonna do about it? And so fast forward many years later when Luce and I finished high school, we started thinking about that question. You know, we didn't want to stand around and watch the issue of bullying destroy the lives of our peers any longer. We really wanted to stand up and do something about it. Because at the time when we finished high school, it's kind of like you're sending young people out into the world. And some young people finish school and they're full of happiness and confidence and ready to take on the world. And others are empty shells of the awesome kid they were when they started. So we decided that we'd do something about it, but we looked around and we saw that there was nothing actually out there in schools reaching young people in a way that was genuine, authentic, or even run by young people. Yeah, I know towards the end of my time at high school, I started to think pretty deeply about the impacts of bullying, both individually but also societally, as I started to see them playing out around the world. And I remember reflecting on how much better the world could be if by the time we finish school, each of us is equipped to challenge social injustice in this world. How by empowering school students, we're actually empowering a better world, right? So back then we came up with a new idea for what we wanted to see at school. And Project Rocket is built on this simple belief that we believe in a world where kindness and respect thrive over bullying, hate and prejudice, and all young people are free to realize their potential. Because we know from personal experience that bullying robs young people of their potential. It extinguishes development and it smothers their opportunities. We knew we had to do something different to tackle the issue. And so from the get-go, we went for a really different approach, running workshops in schools. Instead of going to schools and lecturing and terrifying, fear-mongering and judging young people, we decided that we'd ask questions and listen to people's answers. We decided that instead of pr pretending that it's easy to stand up to things all of the time, we'd be honest about the genuine risks that people face when they encounter bullying, hate and prejudice, especially if they've experienced those risks, those bullying before. You know, maybe they're part of a particular group that is systemically oppressed. We wanted to, instead of pretending that technology is only a weapon, explore how we can mobilize and create commun communities online. We decided that we'd never label people as the bully or the victim, and instead p treat people as complex and valuable and capable of positive impact, because you all are. And most importantly, we decided that we'd all laugh, it'd be fun, and we'd learn together, and that would serve to build empathy among a cohort of students who might otherwise never have truly seen each other before. So that next time they see that someone's having a hard time, we actually care enough to reach out and do something about it. That was pretty much the idea. And it started out as just two young people going into schools running these workshops, and that was us. We didn't even really know if it would work, hey? Yeah, we, full disclosure, I don't know, yeah, we definitely didn't know if it was gonna work. I'm gonna even say that the reason why I thought we could do it is because Luz is my big sister, and she actually said, yeah, we can do it. Didn't but work. over time, like Project Rocket really grew, that we were meeting all these other young people that were hungry for change. And yeah, we realized that it wasn't just a workshop in schools, that we had to really transform this into a movement. Yeah, and so that's when we took the next step and started to look at how we could mobilize online, right? Yeah, that's it. So we um, decided that we could, um, yeah, go so much further and actually harness technology for the greater good. And we created Project Rocket Online, which is designed by young people, for young people, and even stars young people, and has made our workshops available anywhere with an internet connection. 
Importantly, Australia is a really huge com country and there are all these like really regional and remote parts. And so what was so important is that we wanted to make sure that no matter where you live, in, in our country or in the world, as a young person, you can access youth designed content around the issues affecting you most. And we also know that now, especially that youth design content works. Before completing Project Rocket Online, only 49% of young people felt confident enough to challenge bullying. But after completing the program, 96% of young people feel confident enough to stand up. So we know that um, youth design stuff works. We've um, built Project Rocket Online, but we knew we could take it a step further. And that's why we were so excited to partner with um, Google and YouTube, who I know are um, here today, which is really exciting, um, to launch Project Rocket TV. Basically, bite-sized episodes that talk about the really tough stuff that you don't get to talk about at school. The kind of stuff that if you asked a parent, they'd probably give you a really, really bad answer. Or a teacher we might feel a bit compromised. Or if you plugged it into Google, you might even get a dodgy response. So stuff like, questions like, how can I support someone whose private photo has been leaked publicly? Or how do I shut down the spread of vicious online rumors? How do I support my culturally diverse friends without further outing them and alienating them at school? These types of questions that we all have to really explore growing up. So now Project Rocket has positively impacted hundreds of thousands of young people all over Australia, and we, we know that we can take it even bigger. Yeah, you can probably guess that it's a bit of a surprise to us that what started small as two sisters running a community project has now grown into a movement much, much greater than us. And those hundreds of thousands of students that Ro mentioned have become our biggest teachers, our mentors, our heroes. I can honestly say that I've learned so much more going back into schools with Project Rocket than I ever learned as a school student myself. It's an incredibly valuable experience to us personally as well. And that we're so grateful that We've now been able to employ 40 plus young change makers to go into schools and run these workshops themselves. So it's, it's pretty exciting and pretty wild, I guess, too. Yeah, part of our commitment as well is making sure that we elevate young, young voices in all of the spaces that we're in. And so we're really proud now to be able to serve on the, the safety boards of Facebook and Instagram and Twitter to make sure that young people's voices aren't actually missing from the equation. So that's really important to us and that's why we're here today. We want to share some of our learnings with you. Yeah, we were thinking about some of the key learnings that we could share about how you can embed young people in change on the issues that matter most to them. And whether you're a policymaker or an industry leader or an educator or a parent or like you just know a young person. If you're a human. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we thought this could be really helpful. And the first key learning that we want to share is a point that we hear often in schools from students verbatim. We hear it very regularly. And that is believe it or not, at a safety conference. Stop smothering us with safety. So it's really important that we put our trust in young people because they are the future and they are gonna be the change makers for the um, next generations to come. And that's why I do what I do. So you've just met one of our Project Rocket presenters, Raw, who's a total legend. And before we talk about that, I just want to say as a disclaimer, really genuinely, I know we're at the Family Online Safety Institute, and we've just said stop smothering us with safety. We know how important safety is, and we want to thank the people in the room that every day are working towards safety and having to face some of the darkest depths of humanity. But we want to talk about Raw for a moment, because what Raw's getting at is that he wants us to put our trust in young people so that we don't protect them to the extent that we strip away their agency and stop, I guess, all the incredible opportunities that the digital world affords them. Let's put it this way. Traditionally, when we think about young people's experiences online, we tend to weigh up the harms and risks against the benefits and opportunities. And you can see on the left-hand side here some pretty negative experiences that people encounter, you know, becoming isolated through their dependence on technology or a potential loss of interest in the relationships around them physically. You know, maybe we're worried about, we hear this a lot from parents, problem use or that term addiction comes up a lot, mental health problems or scams and predators and cyberbullying. And on the other side, we also really want to enable all these awesome experiences that the online world affords. So belonging, participation and access, learning and mastery, relaxation and play, the ability to grow critical thinking, find new communities and develop resilience. The problem is when we divide these experiences into two binary categories and draw a line on the, down the middle, we're ignoring the fact that often these experiences are inextricably linked and that when we go online, we're likely to encounter, you know, the, all of them really. So take the top line. We might look at a young person and worry that they're becoming isolated as they become buried in their device. 
But actually, when we dig a little deeper, we might learn that they found a new sense of belonging through the online community that they're participating in. Yeah, I can actually think of a guy that I met <clears throat> years ago when I was presenting workshops in school in a place called Wagga Wagga in Australia. <laughs> no, no one's heard of Wagga Wagga? Okay, I'm not surprised. But um, it's a really <laughs> regional part of Australia. And he told me a story after a workshop about how he, he said that social media had saved his life because he felt like he was the only same-sex attracted guy in his whole town. And if it wasn't for the fact that he found community and cohesion and strength online, which he couldn't access offline, he said he genuinely didn't know if he would be here today. Yeah, uh, let me give you another example. We worry about the mental health impacts of social media and really extended use of technology. And at the same time, we know that social media is a forum for support and many young people access mental health support and resources online as well. So what we're saying here, I guess, is that we don't want to um, cut, by cutting young people off from the harms and risks, we want to be careful not to cut them off from the benefits and opportunities as well. So we kind of want to destroy these two columns because, yeah, the risks, the benefits, the harms, the opportunity online look like this. And we want to start looking at it through that lens because when we can, we start thinking about, well, what does it mean to actually equip young people with resilience? Like, how do you actually do it? Well, you start moving away from only focusing on protection and instead start looking at empowerment. Like, how can we encourage um, young people to develop ethics, say, so that when the harms pop up, they can make the right decisions and the resilience so that they can bounce back from those decisions. The critical thinking, the ability to self-regulate, uh, emotional intelligence, for example. So safety is really, really important, but if we wrap young people up in cotton wool and only focus on controls and precautions, we do actually just strip away their agency. And young people are so much more than that. I think it's kind of ironic that when we focus entirely on safety, we don't help young people develop the skills to handle the worst of times, which is the irony of safety, I think. I've never really got that. So that's, that's that learning, and we want to move on to our next learning. Not all young people are the same. I think the work that we do is really important because so much of the time people are having conversations about young people without young people, which doesn't really address the issue. Young people know what the answers are. They want to do something about the issues that are impacting them, and we need to be asking what their voices are. So that's Project Rocket presenter Elsa, and I really agree with her comment that issue she has as a young person, you know, don't talk about us without us. Because when we do talk about young people without including them in the conversation, we tend to reduce them to being a homogenous group, which they're not. You know, not all young people are the same. And it's such a shame when we do that because we're actually erasing their individual differences and the many multifaceted uh, dynamics that shape their identity and the way they move through the world. Things like um, someone's sexuality or gender identity, cultural background, belief system, ethnicity, their socioeconomic access, their personality, their, personality, yeah, their totally. friends, all of these different experiences. And for us, we just see it as such a missed opportunity to create really meaningful change for young people because they don't see themselves represented. Yeah, I think when we're building policies or programs or tools, we have to be representing a whole diverse range of young people because as, as we want to show with our team, you know, you can't be what you can't see. And so heading out into schools tackling bullying, hate and prejudice every day means that it's so important that young people, the students in our workshops, look up to the stage and they see that, that there are young people that identify with them. And we've taken it a really step further um, we've, at Project Rocket with our Youth Brains Trust. The idea that we don't just want young people presenting our workshops, we want them creating them as well. So our Youth Brains Trust annually is a group that we assemble of age between 13 and 20 that really represent many different backgrounds and come together to not only steer the direction of the organisation, but to make sure that our content is really relevant, but also safe and accessible to a range of different voices. We bring them into the process from the very start all the way through. So the takeaways here are to genuinely include a diverse range of young people in decision making, not just sharing their opinions, but actually being able to shape the development of content from start to finish, rather than just bringing them at the end, in at the end to tick a box um, on fully formed and unchangeable ideas that have already been created. Now that we're talking about youth voice, I actually think we can take it further for our last key learning we want to share. Why don't we just go all out? I feel like you were going to introduce a dance break or something. Yeah, we're going to hand over the mic. When we talk about issues online, young people should be in the driver's seats. It's, it's their future, it's their online world, and they're the ones that have the skills and the opportunities to really create lasting social impact. 
The reason I think it's so important to be working at Project Rocket is I had a workshop in year eight and it literally like the message that I could create change was something that lasted with me for years to come. So I found it super important that I could instill that message with other people as well. I love Amal. Um, yeah, I think it's time to hand over the mic and I think what Amal really demonstrates is that young people are ready. She had a workshop four years ago and was inspired to get a job at Project Rocket and we've literally given her a microphone and she's, you know, going around Australia and helping other young people stand up and, and work out what their voice in, is in this world as well. Just like Danny said in the first video that when we're talking about young people's futures, we can't just consult them or involve them. We need to give them the skills and put them in the driver's seat when it comes to tackling the issues that are most important to them. Yeah, and that's why we are so excited and passionate to be teaming up with Facebook and Instagram to upskill 10,000 young Australians in 400 schools to become the first generation of Project Rocket digital ambassadors. School students taking action on the issues that matter to them. Pretty cool. You remember before that Ro and I launched Project Rocket because we, to create the change that we want to see? Well, now it's time for us to hand over the mic so that the next generation can do exactly that. The way that it works, is over the next, over this year and next year, our team are heading out into communities around Australia to run a series of really high impact community events that each bring together hundreds of students from local schools in a full day of Project Rocket Learning. The events are peer uh, designed and peer led and they explore all of the issues we've been naming now. So how to balance these risks and rewards of challenging hate and prejudice and the harms and benefits of being online. And really importantly, they give an opportunity for every unique person attending to elevate their diverse perspectives on the change that they want to see. And it's really important to us that it doesn't end there. We want to support them to actually turn that into action. After the event, each digital ambassador and their teacher plugs into our online action hub where they are connected with a powerful network of peers. They can access blogs and learn new skills that they want to learn. And they can even create content as well to share on their social media or to share with their friends and family, which is really awesome. But most importantly, they can take action. Yeah, we're really excited to be building social change makers, not just people that are tackling bullying in their own limited school communities, but these young people, they've attended an event, they go back to their schools, they spread the movement, they upskill via the online hub, and they have loads of ideas that they want to bring to, bring to reality. But we know probably better than anyone how hard it can be to actually get something like this off the ground. Yep. And so we're so excited to be announcing that in partnership with Facebook, we're actually going to be launching the Digital Ambassadors Grant Fund, where we are, I hope I can say this, putting Facebook's money where our mouth is, <laughs> and um, funding young people's ideas for social change. Not just about bullying, but the issues that matter to them. Racism, ableism, climate change. We also want to make sure that we're elevating their recommendations and ideas to grown-ups. In fact, next week we're actually flying four digital ambassadors to our nation's capital where we're hosting a roundtable with our top politicians in the country to make sure that they really listen up to young people's experiences. We're going to put them in the driver's seat and have them make recommendations there too. So I this feel like really, that would be a great thing to do in this country too. Yeah, this, <laughs> this really is more than just a school program. This really is a national movement that's led by young people who are ready to go beyond tackling cyberbullying and instead start creating and engineering the digital world that they want to live in. Yeah, you might be able to tell that although we started Project Rocket, this movement really isn't about us anymore. We've, we've created this platform, but we really want to hand it over to the next generation. And I'm so hopeful personally, I know you are too, about the positive impact that the first generation of Project Rocket digital ambassadors will bring. You know, it's just incredible to think about because we may feel powerless when we stand on our own, but this movement has always been about power in numbers. And I really believe that together is the most effective way to shut down bullying, hate and prejudice in this world. So it is time to shake up the way that we tackle online hate. We all know that cyberbullying, trolling, stalking and intimidation, image-based abuse, public shaming, are all soul-destroying experiences that affect way too many young people. But at Project Rocket, we also know that in order to really make a dent in these issues, we need to stop pushing all of that negative messaging onto young people that's only gonna limit their experience of the digital world and strip away their agency. When we elevate young people as digital ambassadors, you know, as 
the empowered, creative, responsible leaders that they are as custodians of the online world rather than just participants, we instill some very powerful messages. You can create change. You are enough. You belong. You can reinvent yourself. You can be outside the box. Fair enough. You can be a force for good. Your community is strong. Your kindness shines. Your culture matters. And finally, you can use your online power for good. Thanks so much for having us. <laughs>